Well, that's not good. I'm gonna save you the unboxing details and we're gonna dive right into testing this thing out. I've got the Titanium Unlimited 140. It's their multi-process welder. Now this was an open box deal. Uh, the only thing I'm in question about is there was no wire. Now I've heard from other welders that Harbor Freight that they've taken out the wire. So I'm guessing that is the case that no welders come with wire anymore from Harbor Freight. Right off the bat, I hooked up the flux core wire. I usually like starting off with that. I've got some eighth inch material doing a fillet weld on a T-joint and it's laying down pretty nicely. I follow the settings directly under the hood and no adjustments and I don't think I would actually change anything either. And since it didn't come with wire, I already had some Vulcan uh, 30 thousandths and so I ended up just using that and that gives me kind of the biggest range of material to do as well. So if you're in question on what size to get, I'd always suggest going with 0 .030. Now with this flux core, I did want to test it out with some thicker material. I didn't have any 3 16 but I had these little uh, quarter inch pieces lying around. So you know what? It doesn't say you can actually do this thick, but I'm going to test it out anyway. For most everybody in your garage or shop or home use, it's going to be just fine. Switching over to MIG, I use some C25 or 75% uh, argon, 25% CO2, just a mixed gas. Don't forget to switch your polarity as well. And I'm using some Vulcan uh, 30,000 solid core wire. With this, I'm actually starting out with some thinner material, and that's just because you can do thinner with MIG welding. So I've got some 16th inch coupons. These were just the suggested settings, and to me it sounds like the wire speed's a bit too low. The weld actually didn't look too bad, but it was just sputtering a little more than I think it should have. Kicking it up to 8th inch material, doing the same uh, fillet weld on a T-joint. Stick welding, I don't know if anyone really cares about that. It did strike an arc really quickly and easily, and uh, for the most part, held that arc. I started with some uh, 6011, next was 6013, then turned up the amperage a little bit and went with some 7014, and ended on a 7018 rod. All of these rods were 3 seconds of an inch. The TIG function, well, keep in mind, you're gonna need 100% argon and some tungsten. Yes, these are just the basic uh, TIG welding setups in that they have manual valves, so you do have to turn on the valve. There's a shot of what it looks like if you forget to turn on the valve. This is a lift style TIG, meaning you actually touch the tungsten to the workpiece, and when you lift off, that's when it creates the arc. It is kind of a step up from scratch start, but not as nice as a high frequency start. Probably the number one question that gets asked is, can you weld aluminum with, aluminum with it? Nope, and that's because this is an inverter type machine that outputs DC voltage. Yes, you can do aluminum if you are using a spool gun on the MIG settings, um, but not on the TIG side of things. There you have it, it ran all four processes just great. Um, and I like that it comes with all of the accessories for each process. Uh, you know, there's some that I've seen recently that don't include the TIG torch, <coughs> Lincoln. Now to the flip side of that, uh, they took away the wire. So don't forget that, you do need to get some uh, wire if you're running that. Kind of complaints I would be is the typical Harbor Freight 90 day warranty and that you have to spend extra to get the extended warranty. And short of that, the only thing I would actually suggest is if you have a 220 in your garage or any desire to ever kick it up to 220, then just skip this and go to the 200. It gives you that much more uh, range and thickness of materials. If you don't have that and don't ever want 220, then this guy's a great machine. 
That's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.